Welcome back to Switch to Linux and another Distro Wars. Well, somebody asked me to look at a couple distributions that are free of system D. We'll go ahead and talk about that in a moment here, but I chose Artix and Dev1. Artix being a rolling Arch distribution, which is built on, um, without system D, you have three different choices. We have OpenRC, Runnit, or S6. We also chose Dev1, which I believe has the options to choose to install each either one of those. I did not see those options in the install, but it is also possible I might have missed it because both of these are fairly complicated distributions, making them not as great for the new user. So before we dive into all that, let's talk about the systemd portion. Some people suggest that systemd is spyware, NSA software, tracking all of your information, perpetually watching it. I have not seen any evidence about that. Um, somebody has said they will be sending me some more evidence of that. I will look that over and uh, let you guys know what I think. But as I have seen it and even worked with systemd a little bit, I have not seen a compelling reason not to use it unless you're like, eh, it's a big bloated garbage mess. And sure, we can take that same argument for X. Uh, let's kill X to move over to Wayland uh, if for no other reason because it's a patchwork of big buggy messy code. And big buggy messy code generally isn't the best thing to do. All that being said, I would not have any quibble about what uh, your initialization systems are. Basically, the initialization system gets everything running online and uh, starts up all of the services, make sure everything is in order, and there are several different options. So as far as from I'm concerned, I don't care about system D or not system D. It's not a hill I'm gonna die on. In fact, it's rarely even a battle I'm even going to fight. Uh, unless somebody starts giving me some compelling reasons to start fighting that battle, in which case, hey, we'll tackle that when we get to it. Uh, with that being said, though, we do want to have a look at these two distributions. So the first one we're going to look at is Artix. So this is a simple, fast, system D free. These guys take the approach that says, hey, we don't think system D is bad. We just know that people like other alternatives. This is why Linux will find a way. Now in this, uh, you can choose a variety of desktop environments and you can choose OpenRC, Runnit, or S6. I just chose to do my original testing in S6 and I found out that an Arch update blows it up, makes it completely useless, which did not look good for the system. I wiped all that out and I went with OpenRC. I was then able to form an update and um, have a sustainable running system at the end of the update. And so there we have it. Um, so there is certainly some concern, at least with the S6 version. The other thing I hated about Artix is it's one of these distributions and the lumber is growing that pisses me off. We're like on the setup. That's a weak password. You can't, that password doesn't pass the dictionary. That password. Stupid distribution. Let me choose my password. Okay. I'm in a virtual machine. I don't need a super secret, amazing password that's NSA double military grade encryption. So I had to give it my traditional password, which usually involves a swear word and the distro name. And then once the thing is boot up, go into password, uh, pass WX or WD, change the password I want. Artix, you got to fix that crap. It's my computer. Let me choose the password. Okay. Really? Dev one. I did not have those problems with. All right, now heading on over to the download portion, you can choose where your different mirrors are. Of course, I went to the USA. And then you can see here that we have your checksums. You have the Artix uh, base, OpenRC, Runit, S6. You have Cinnamon, you have a community, GTK, LXDE, LXQT, Mate, Plasma, XFCE. I chose to go XFCE on all of these. And so really you have a lot of good options. Each one of these is, uh, is a separate download. I did start with the XFCE S6. This blows itself up on an update. So don't do the XFCE S6, at least until something is fixed. I did run the XFCE OpenRC as the one we're looking at today. And that did survive an update. 
The other distribution we're looking at is Dev1. Dev1 is Debian without System D. It pretty much just follows this trend. They do say you can use all of the same initialization systems and you choose them on the install. I did not see those options, so I actually don't know what my initialization system is other than I know it's not um, System D. Um, it's very possible I simply missed it. They do say here the installer now offers a choice of run it. Uh, oh, it's uh, sys, uh, sysv init and openrc. Um, and so it says that it gives you that choice. I did not see that choice, but again, it is possible I simply missed it. I did have a hard time uh, getting these guys up and running, indicating that these are probably not the most user-friendly distributions. Uh, of course, the Arch version, Artix, is going to be a lot more up-to-date, rolling, and going to work better on your newer hardware. The Dev1 is going to be oldest molasses, rolling about as fast as a glacier. And uh, it's going to be um, very well suited for a long-term stable system that you do not want upgrades blowing it up. So depending on what your use case is, there's no bad choice here. It's just you need to understand the differences between them. So first, let's go ahead and start with our Artix Linux. Boot this guy up. This guy went right on into a full screen without any problem. Dev1, I had to force it into the full screen a couple of times. Sometimes it preserved the settings, sometimes it did not. We'll kind of see. I think that's more or less to do with an XFCE change than it is to do with anything else. Here is our login. Let's go ahead and enter our super secret password that's definitely not 123, and it's definitely not some vulgarity in the um, Linux distribution name because it did not want to let me choose my own password. And so here we have our, um, uh, we have our desktop here, basic XFCE running, um, running on an Arch base. Now, it's not as polished as many times distributions are. If you click down here for your browser, it's like there's no application selected. Uh, you have to choose it. Midori is the only browser that we have to choose from. So here you go. And uh, when you get in here and boot it up, it is going to take you to a page which has a variety of different um, uh, packages, other information. Here is the wiki page on Artix. So you can get some basic help information by booting up the web browser, assuming you have an internet connection. Here is the forum, and here is the home page. So all four of those tabs all boot up when you first get this guy up and running. As far as other software, it is very minimal in base. Uh, there is no email application installed. You will have to install something. So under your accessories here, we just have some basic applications. Here's notes, here's uh, system clocks, here's your task manager. Let's boot that guy up. Uh, so we're using 500 megabytes of RAM. So that's actually pretty good. Nothing in here I would ever consider bloat except maybe XF burn. Some CD or some computers are coming without CD ROMs anymore. So that might be maybe is considered a bloat software at this point in time, but whatever else. So you can see very, very light on software. We have MVP. Uh, we have check with your parole officer. All right. Uh, here is your uh, pulse audio. Under office, we just have basic uh, calendar, basic PDF reader, and then our basic system settings for XFCE. So nothing in here is uh, nothing in here is uh, considered really bloaty. Very minimal system, very basic system. As is standard Arch, there is no software manager. If you'd want to add a software manager, maybe you could install Pomic, but. You know, we can come in and uh, just do our Pac-Man. If you're going to be wanting to run an Arch, this is probably what you're going to want to do anyway. So there we are. Let's see. Is it up to date? Eh, yep. Yeah, our system is actually up to date. There is nothing to do. So there is Artix. Um, on the plus side, if you do want a system without System D and you want to run Arch, this is a very good logical choice to do that. So... If you, um, uh, here's the downsides. 
Number one, you have to choose which initialization system and which desktop environment you want. Every one of them is a different file and it does not want to let you choose the password of your choice. If this is just a test system, I want to go with a super weak password just because I should be able to do, do that. This is my computer. So Artix is trying to get in the way of that. Um, not a huge change. If that is your case, just come in here, just do pass WD. It's going to ask you for your current password and then to input a new password. This application is not limited in what you can do. So there you have it. Other than that, it's pretty much just going to be Arch. Now, because things like Snap requires System D, you're not going to have Snap packages running on it. Maybe that's a big advantage. Maybe for that reason, I should absolutely want to use this, but who knows? Uh, and then, you know, there's some other factors and, and functions you can look at as well. But um, with that, there's Artix. It's it's it doesn't look any different than uh, than your regular Arch. If somebody didn't tell you what the difference was, you probably wouldn't know it. And there you have it. You just have a basic system. Let's have a look at Dev1 next. So here we are on the Dev1 screen. Ooh, here I even have to remember what my username is. Hopefully I can remember how to spell Dev1. I have my super secret password. It's definitely not one, two, three, and then we'll see. It looks like, um, once again, it, this just does not want to boot into full screen. Uh, so there you go. Let's do that. There we are. Now we're full screen. I did. I, this is, I, I think, having to do with this particular version of XFCE. Um, I've noticed some other compelling things like the, um, the display manager application does not work uh, on this version. And I've seen that before. So if you click on this guy here, oh, this actually is working now. I actually was not able to get that screen working before. Maybe updates fixed it. I don't know. But anyway, here we are on Dev1. So Dev1, we had issues with the installer. It is a very complicated installer. In fact, uh, I want to show you what that looks like when we're done here. So we'll walk over what we have and then we'll have a look at the installer. And uh, they do have an entire installer guide here to walk you through the installation process, which is not nearly as simple as Artix is. Of course, it takes us to a file not found because we are not running on the live key. So the installer guide that they give us on the desktop actually doesn't work. They should have gotten rid of that guy. We can increase uh, our fonts, decrease our fonts. And uh, that will do a system-wide font change there, although it never gets our fonts back to what the default is. If you wanna change your fonts back, you're gonna to have to do it manually over here. I think uh, 12 might be what they were at. There you go, that's a little bit better. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, you guys can read that better anyway. So this is basically just gonna be Debian um, without, uh, without systemd. At least they have their web browser tied into uh, into what the actual web browser is. They're using Firefox CSR because that's usually what um, Debian uses. We have Mutt, which I've not used before. That is an email client. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think it's not a terminal email client or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, we do have more applications on this. It is a little bit more bloaty. Uh, just not a whole ton, but just a little bit. We have LibreOffice installed. Uh, hey, at least we do have an email client. Oh, we, we, we do have we do have parole again. Go check with your officer. XFCE burn. We got our LibreOffice font increase, decrease. It seems like a weird random thing to have that. But anyway, it is. So there's Refracta Installer, Refracta Snapshot. These are good tools. They will allow you to make um, uh, make some snapshots of your system. So there's pretty much what we have with, with Dev1. It's, it's going to be based on Debian. So here you're just going to use um, your apt. So sudo apt update is going to get you your updates here. And uh, on our download page, we pretty much only have the single one. Actually, no, I don't think that's correct. I forgot to show the downloads page, but let's go ahead and do that now. And uh, I think that um, what it's going to do is you still do need to pick your individual um, desktop. So click in over here. We have our desktop live. We have a net install. We have a server. We have a minimal live. Okay, so you don't have your your desktop. Let's uh, let's just go here. 
Uh, Beowulf is the one we want. And then here's your desktop live. Here's your installs. We have desktop net installer. We have server there. Is your minimal live just gets to your minimal. So there we don't have as many options on download. Although being Debian, we can probably add any other desktop environment the same way we would do anything else in Debian. All right, so that is what Dev1 looks like. It's really these two are, they're just the main system we had, only devoid of system D. You're not gonna notice a huge difference with any of those. But what I do want to show you is uh, the installer on Dev1 is quite a bit different. Now, Artix is just a, a standard Calamaris installer, and it's easy to use, easy to understand, whatever, no big deals. Dev1, oh, um, not for the faint of heart, um, because it just jumps between a few different screens, and then the screens are feeding a script back into... Uh, into the terminal and um, if you've been around Linux any amount of time you're not going to have a problem if you're a new user do not go with dev1 as your uh, as your your sole choice because it's going to be problematic for you all right let's go ahead and um, let this guy load up let's put it into full screen so We are so there's that here's the installer guide which should actually now work that we are on the live version boot this guy up it's gonna go into Firefox and this is not a website this is a file that's on the system so read the release notes here's your security warning here's your BIOS MBR mode UEFI mode extra information. So you have a lot of documentation here to help with the system, but it's not something that's quite as easy to just, it's not as easy as most Linux distributions are where you just go in, click the installer and go. So this is what we have. We have, a um, uh, we have an installer up here. We have this guy here. We need to click your continue and then, um, you know, grub PC is not installed, but you boot it into BIOS mode. You have grub PC dev packages. You'll be given a chance to install them in the new system. All right. We'll continue. Now we can create a new separation, create a separate boot partition, use a partition swap. Instead, you can encrypt the system. You encrypt the home partition. Uh, you can write random data to the encrypted. Um, so you can see a lot of other options here. Let's go ahead and click home. And then, um, the next one here, we get information on our disks. You might need this. Now we have to run gparted to figure out exactly what we want to do. In this case, if you want to do anything, you're going to want to delete this out, create any partitions that you want. Okay. Choose the partition you want to install on. Choose your format, ext234. And then here it's going to be um, asking with the installation. So now we're going to start with our time zones. You can do all locales. I think the English is, um, US English, I'm pretty sure is automatically selected. So I think we're okay to just proceed. It's gonna double check that. There you go, US English UTF-8. So we're good there. That's good there. Good keyboard, good keyboard layout. This is your compose key, basically your alt key. So if you do caps lock, left logo, right logo. And then here by default, the combination of control alt backspace does nothing. You can uh, set this in the X server. Do you want to do that? Yes or no. Proceed anyway. Yes or no. And now it's going ahead with the installation process and it didn't even ask us about the initialization system and I thought that it probably should. So this is what I mean. This is, if you've been using Linux any period of time, this is not gonna be a complicated thing. If you're watching this going, oh, people are saying switch to Linux, oh my God, no, no, no. If, if you're new to Linux, don't do this distribution, okay? Uh, use Linux Mint, use Ubuntu, use anything other than this, probably. 
This is not a bad system. It is fine. It is good. It's just more complicated to get installed. So that is going to be your downside of running Dev1 is you're going to want to know something about FDisk. You're going to want to know something, well, Gparted more. You're going to want to have some basic understanding about how Linux distributions work, how boot sectors do, and things like that. You are going to be able to get this installed, but again, it's not really giving us the options that I thought it should. I am not sure which initialization system it's giving us, I guess, whatever the default is. Um, so there we are. And then to be perfectly honest, I did not dig in to figure out which type it is. So um, there is our thoughts on that. So comparing these two, I think this one's probably more of a wash. Uh, Dev1 is a lot harder to install, but hey, at least they allows us to choose our own passwords unlike Artix. Artix gives us an Arch system. Dev1 gives us a, Deb a Debian system. We have the options to choose our initialization systems. And who knows, maybe they'll ask us to install it later and I skip by it you know, when I first installed it as well. If you need rolling packages and you don't want system D, definitely do Artix. If you just need something that's stable, that's not gonna update a lot, you don't like updates, you just wanna get a good working system and leave it at that, you wanna use Dev1. They're both good. Now, why should you use one of these instead of something with system D? I don't have a compelling reason. Nobody's given me a compelling reason not to use system D, except, hey, it's your computer. I want to do with it what I want. Valid choice. Valid choice, completely valid. Um, go use one of these if you want to avoid system D. I'm okay with that too. So there's my thoughts looking at RTX versus Dev1. They're both fine. Um, they're both a little bit more for advanced. I did have problems on Dev1 on the install. I had problems with Artix on updating S6 XFCE, kept on killing the system. So there we have it. This is kind of a wash. It's kind of up to you to choose which one you want to do. The end product is basically Debian or Arch with whatever your chosen desktop environment is with no other choice in between. Um, and there's no other reason to look at the distros any deeper than that. They're light on resources. They use alternative initialization systems and that's that. So uh, let me know your thoughts on these two. Are you using any of these in production? If so, which one and how's it going for you? Let us know all that in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.